This is the Cooking Today Show. I'm Alan Gilbert, and I'm here with my partner in culinary crime, Mr. Brandon Olmstead. How are you, sir? Amazing today. Um, and not just because of the fact that you brought in more pasta than could humanly be consumed <laughs> in one sitting, which isn't hard. <laughs> we, you know... Mm. You underestimate my power. Um, oh, oh, yeah. See, you know, we got to remember to start just throwing Claire in there. Mm-hmm. She, she's always here. She's 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 what do we what do we refer to her? Is she who must be obeyed. She who must be obeyed. Absolutely. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so just giving people a little glimpse behind the curtain, you know, how the sausage is made, so to speak. Mm. Uh huh. We uh, that's for another episode. <laughs> last <laughs> night. <laughs> you, know, you know, we're getting ready for the show, and, and we were trying to figure out what, what's our subject. Mm-hmm. And I, had, I I brought up mass cooking. I was like, so maybe, you know, we start with a pasta or a rice. And then you just went, oh, you actually texted out like 12 O's. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. then that was mm-hmm. the last I heard from you until you got here. Well, and then I'm, I'm going to throw in, I, I was on the phone with Robert Alsup from AIM Country Spotlight. I love Robert. Robert's an amazing and dude. And Robert was giving me some grief. He goes, well, he goes, it's a cooking show. You just need to cook like spaghetti and meatballs. You just need spaghetti and meatballs. And I went, no, I need to explore pasta. I need to go to... <laughs> I walked in my kitchen, and this is how you know you are a food junkie. Right. When okay. in 16 inches of your kitchen... You can count at least four different kinds of pasta. Okay. Th- Don't so call me out like this. I, I feel attacked. <laughs> it's like I open a cabinet and there's... I'm like, you know, I get, there's angel hair, there's rigatoni, there's spaghetti, there's mm-hmm. linguine, there's uh, rotini, there's uh, yeah, I, there's I, some I, elbow macaroni. There's I, <laughs> I've, got, I've got some that, you know, dis, despite my, you know, my familial roots in various locations, because I am a mutt... Uh, I can't pronounce the Italian names of some of the pastas that are in my uh, ca- mm-hmm. cabinet, but okay, that's shaped like a like a mm-hmm. you know bow tie, and that that right there is shaped like a wagon wheel. That looks like a trumpet, and that looks like the inner ear ear canal. And I don't know what the, you know to actually call them, but it's pasta. There is was, no that's such close thing enough. As, I knew every which one you were talking there's about. There's no such thing as a bad pasta, Mm-mm. in my opinion. Mm-mm. And we all look at Claire. They're <laughs> all your friends. <laughs> <laughs> Well, all right, so we were, all right, we're coming out of Snowmageddon. Yes. We are emerging from a pandemic. So mm-hmm. we're, well, I know we're dating the which, show just a little which, bit. Which but. I, I want to, I, you know, real quick, just, I got my first vaccine shot. So yes. it's like, I'm well on my way to, to, to vaccination and I'm, I feel good. You know, it's like, I, I'd, I'd love to see more people, you know, get enthusiastic about it. You know, totally, but, totally. Of. I, I am can relieved you imagine, every friend that tells me I've been poked. Can you imagine, yes. you know, uh, being able to have big dinners again once everybody's vaccinated? That's my goal. Soon. I want to be able to have big get-togethers with people and cook for everybody. And and thus, we brought up pasta. Pasta. The mass um, cooking giant. All right. One. I, I, I give Robert mad props for bringing up spaghetti and meatballs because when you say pasta, you automatically think spaghetti. Yes. That is an American reflex of, I do not. No, you're probably all Yokosobian and stuff like that. I, well, you know, I, I I suddenly look at, well, I look at pasta like I look at popcorn. Oh, God. It is <laughs> just it is just a place to start. For anyone who's listened to our popcorn episode knows that that didn't, you know, that didn't end <laughs> at the end of the show. We kept going. <laughs> oh, oh no, we we popcorned for a while. Of so, all right. So here we go. You don't have to know the name of the pastas. You just basically need to know what the shapes are really designed for. Okay. So I, I guess you've got you've got you know the handy dandy knowledge we need on this one. Well, you know, basically just look at the shape of the pasta and figure out what sticks to it. Okay. So if it's really curly, that means it's really designed to get a lot of the sauce and flavors all the way into the pasta. All right. If it's long and skinny, it's kind of just a flavor delivery process. Okay. So as you look at your pastas, do you stuff them? Does there little nooks and crannies to hold flavor and sauce and that type of thing? Or is there not? So, so, so what you're telling me is that lasagna, uh, you know, uh, sheets are literally just to separate flavor. 
Exactly. Okay, cool. All right. It, it, you've got I'm perfect. Getting, I'm getting perfect. In there. So, but you also get to think about the level of flavor that you want to pair with a pasta. Okay. Because if you have your linguines, your flat noodles, your spaghettis, these are nice, long, just pieces of pasta. Right. They don't hold a lot. So you can pair them with heavier flavors. Your Alfredo's, your red sauces, right. the marinara's, that kind of stuff. Okay. Yeah. Of You can have a lot of fun, but keep in mind, you're not going to stick a lot of something to them. Right. So you can go heavy on the flavor. Okay, okay. Uh, I, I see where you're going with this. Now, and now I want to I, I want to see what you're going to do with the giant pasta shells one day. Then, oh, that that's a whole. You stuff them with delicious. Well, things. well, no, no, no. no. We know, Claire, we know that. But then it's Alan who likes to experiment. <laughs> so I can't wait to see what this brings. We're going to uh, come in next week and he's fit a whole pig in there somehow. Uh, uh-uh, no, no. Next week is waffles. I am being very adamant about that. <laughs> so everybody will know. Um, <laughs> Waffle so. in giant shell pasta. Stranger things have been known to happen. Oh, God. All right, so. Why did I just see a Starbucks logo <laughs> shoot up above your head? <laughs> You're going to put all the flavors together. It, it can happen. It can happen, people. Of So basically, here's the idea. of It's once again, and welcome to Cooking Today here on the Mighty 990, 107.9. And it's called Cooking Today for a reason. It's 6 o'clock. It's 7 o'clock. You just got home. You have the masses that live in your house to feed. Yeah. And, and even though you want to just tell them, fend for yourself, you know that that's not really an option. Because you're going to not safe. Because you're going to have to clean up after. Yes. Of so here's the great thing with pasta. A, it can be pre cooked. Yes. So and I I am the huge proponent once again of after dinner, after homework, after things have settled down and people are watching TV and relaxing. Now is a great time to prep the centerpiece of tomorrow. And what a lot of people seem to forget is that while, yes, okay, there's work involved. Yes, you're going to have to cook. You're going to have to clean up. It's But that can be one of the best zen-like uh, wind-downs to your day. Yes. I have found that if I've cooked something to prepare it for the next day, or even if I've just prepped it so that all I've got to do is throw it into the oven or you know the slow cooker the next day, afterwards I sleep easier. And it's because I've gotten myself into that very calmness afterwards because there, there's one less thing to worry about tomorrow. Well, you're not going to have to worry about the next day when you say, gee, what are we going to have for dinner? Or when they say, gee. Oh, oh. Well, they don't say, gee. It starts like, we're <laughs> hungry. And, you know, it's, what are you cooking? It's yeah. like, I just walked in the door. Yes, exactly. So pasta is a great thing to where you can go ahead and pre-cook a big old batch of it, whatever shape, size, or description that you want. I'm a fan of mixing. Drain it. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you want to kind of stay with like the same sort of size pasta. Well, well yeah, uh, same size and basic, uh, you know, purpose. Yes. You know, uh, if you're doing elbows and then those trumpets, oh yeah, you, you're good. If you're doing 14 different sizes of spaghetti noodle, mm. that's even better. Mm. Oh yeah, you're having fun. And again, this is another one where if you have the finicky eater that doesn't like X, we'll just put food X right. in there. Well, maybe they'll like it if it has little curly cues in it. Yeah. It, maybe they'll like it if it has little trumpets. If if, if a kid can spell out his name in the pos- mm. with the pasta, he'll eat it no matter what you put on it. it Saying is, that as a former little kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome to the idea of Pasta as just your base, right. a good place to start. Mm-hmm. But, and a lot of people kind of go, but I don't want to have spaghetti every day. We're nowhere even near. We're not even going to talk about marinara anymore in this show. Yeah, this, because this is not this is not the spaghetti episode. No, you this will, is not marinara. You will, you will get a sauce episode in the near future, but it's not today. It's not today. Today is just that. Okay, I already have this big thing of pasta made. It's sitting in the fridge. Right. Now it is time to rummage, experiment, or meet or exceed expectations. Yes. Of 
Again, what are the flavors your family likes? Do they like fresh veggies? Are you trying to get the kids to eat their broccoli? Are you trying to get them to, well, you know what? Don't just throw a big old slab of steamed broccoli on the page, blap, and and expect a four-year-old to get excited about it. That looks like little trees. I'm not eating that. Yeah, you know, of however, whatever you want to blend into your vegetables, you know, yeah. will match with pasta. It's true. Of small amounts of meat, small pieces. I'm not talking about a steak with spaghetti on top of it. I'm talking chopped up and in there. I, I have experienced that at a restaurant, though. I was about to say, that there's probably multiple places in Memphis in particular that do that. And it's And you're just like... Why? You just you scoop it off and then you you know, it's your side, but it always sends up wrong. Uh, well, yeah, you you need to have these things where they're pleasing, they plate well. But here's the other part: have a sense of adventure with this because you you know your base product, the pasta, is not mm-hmm. going to let you down. Right. And when we come back, uh, we'll be talking about that because. Pasta is that great savior, that great place to be, to where you know it's there. You can count on it. You know what it's going to taste like, and now you can have some fun. And uh, I am sitting here with Brandon and Claire as we dive into the wonderful world of pasta. Yeah, that's the perfect descriptor for this because, or maybe just one, instead of wonderful, wonder us. Because mm. you look at the pasta, you see what... Just a you know a little bit of foreshadowing here. You see what Alan has done with the pasta that he's brought in, and it makes you go, "Oh, but what if I did this? Or how pairing it with this? What's the perfect wine for this? You know, because mm. I don't have kids, so I can have wine at dinner and not have to worry about anything." Hallelujah! <laughs> you have you have struck the nerve. There you go. Of guys, cooking is not what people wind up thinking it is. It never is. No. It, it, it's, you know, life itself is usually never what we expected. Cooking is an adventure. Cooking is fun. I want cooking to be fun. Now, a lot of yeah. people love to watch the cooking shows. Right. And, and all of that. And can, can I, I have, can I, can I make a little confession? Go when I was it. younger, I watched the cooking shows mainly because I wanted to see how long it took certain hostesses and hosts to, um, Get inebriated while they cooked because wow. it's a shot of sherry for the for mm-hmm. the meat, shot of sherry for me. We won't bring up the galloping gourmet. Oh, but <laughs> well, not today. So you were watching the fun cooking shows. PBS, yo. Oh my gosh, those were great. They were great. Plus, I learned how to cook through that. You know, I'm I'm a, I'm a Gen Xer. I'm I'm not going to say Ooh. I'm a latchkey kid, but you know, both my parents worked all the time, so it was me taking care of my sisters right. a lot. You know, so. It's through that that I learned, you know, what you can get away with while experimenting with food. Oh, there's so much. So much. And the answer is just about everything. Yeah. It, it, oh, to your taste. And, yeah. and that is the really coolest answer here. So, all right, we're going to start with the most basic of all, right. your, your standard bag of rotini. And for those of you that don't know what rotini is, that's the little corkscrew looking stuff. The spirals, man. Not, the not spirals. the early spring kind. Yep. It's kavatapi. Yep. And they look, they usually come packaged in multiple colors because they have some spinach pasta. They have some regular pasta. They've got the different, the, the different wheats that were right. used to make the pasta. So they usually come in multicolored yeah. of, and I love the multicolored one because- I'm a, it's just fun. Well, I'm a huge fan of the, the you know, the spinach pasta in general. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's, I don't know, maybe I'm just weird, but there's a, something about putting something that is olive drab green into a red sauce. Yes. Or a yellow sauce or a clear sauce. Okay. I just like the pasta. I mean, it's, it's just fun. It, it has really color. Is. It has color. Okay. So for this first one, as everybody has their bowls and we're looking at each other in the eyes here. Okay. All right. This one is going to be rotini, and it's not going to be what you think it is. I know it looks like it has a little cream sauce on it. Okay. What it has is Caesar salad dressing. Okay. So here we go. What do you think? I've never liked Caesar salad dressing this much. (laughs) (laughs) Well, there you go. (laughs) I, I, I have to agree. I'm one of those, 
weird people who after when I get a Caesar salad, I also ask for a side of another type of dressing because I'm not a huge fan of Caesar dressing. I mm-hmm. always ask for no dressing yeah. on my salad. Well, <laughs> well, aren't you just healthy? Well, well no, it's just because and. <laughs> I'm beginning to wonder, just from eating this, maybe it's because every maybe did they put too much dressing on the salad if they give it to you somewhere else? Right. The oh. idea is it's a dressing, not a drowning. Mm-hmm. And because we are looking at little rotinis, right, which are designed to carry a sauce with them, right? They are they are designed to pick up even the lightest of flavors. Of I, I will have to confess, I did a little bit of a trick on you, Claire. Just a tiny little bit. How could you? Because because it's to fun. lighten Touché. to lighten the Caesar flavor, knowing this is Brittoni, of I used a tablespoon of mayonnaise mm-hmm. to lighten the Caesar flavor before I tossed it over the salad. Very wise. Okay. So so, so it's almost like a Caesar aioli. It is. Okay. It, it's almost. It's, it's really good. It's softer. Yeah. It's lighter. It doesn't have that bite. Right. And what would you pair with this now? What would you, you know, because right, keep in mind, this is nothing more than a rotini that right. was boiled until it was the proper uh, consistency. I like it. I like it, like, honestly, two minutes past al dente. I don't like really boiled right. death pasta. I like pasta to still be a little bit. Have its shape and its firmness. So, so the carnivore in me is saying, you know, like a thin a steak or brisket, not oh, necessarily a flavor. You are you are on the money. But the 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 you know the uppity part of me, the 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 I'm too good for this kind of is thinking salmon. All will work. I can kind of yeah. see that. I'll I'll be honest. Maybe it's just because my brain is firmly on pasta salad mm-hmm. with this. This just feels like it would be really nice. With a burger, <laughs> okay. you're you're yeah. dead on the money. Of now, the other it thing, definitely, it, 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 it does seem like something that's going to accentuate the flavor of whatever meat you have paired with it. Yes, um, I don't know. I can't think of anything that would be bad with this, but at the same time, I think that a bowl of this by itself would be worth it. Well, and now here's where this is where really tossing in your veggies kicks yeah. in: broccoli, cauliflower, zucchini, bell pepper, any. Mm. Anything you would normally or even not normally slice yeah. up, uh, this now goes into the salad or can go with the salad with a side of dipping sauce, okay. which can be just your full strength Caesar dressing. I, I don't I don't know if I'd go full strength Caesar dressing on any of this because this is this seems like the perfect balance of flavor. Right uh, if here. this is the perfect balance, then yeah. you've made one bowl of it. Take you another tablespoon and make another bowl of it. And now you have a lighter Caesar. Okay. That's not as heavy. It's not as sharp. Yep. So a spoonful of mayonnaise helps the dressing go down. Is the it, message it, well, it makes it today. go on really well. So it makes it fit into. Now, again, keep in mind, we're talking about the shape of it. And the little corkscrews are designed to transport as much as they can. So you don't want to put the big, giant, heavy flavor on this. Right, because you're going to get the flavor. You're going to get quite a bit of flavor for every piece of Rotona. Right. Okay, all right, all right. I'm I'm good with this one, but I, if I see correctly, you've got another. I do. Rotini, uh, rotini bowl. And this one has a red tint to it and smells it's amazingly very, like, well... It's going not, to a Mexican restaurant. It's it smell it smells like my table before the food gets here. This this is the nacho, isn't it? A fajita maybe. This is you're exactly correct. Ooh. This is rotini. This is with fajita seasoning. Okay. Now see here's the here's the thing. You know when you're going with the you know the Caesar flavor a minute ago, you're still kind of like you know banking on that you know Italian Mediterranean yes. mix of the flavor. Yes. This is totally taking it to the other side. I just spun the dial. Yeah, you know, the globe went spinning and you went, I'm going to go for Spain. Yes. So. Hola, right. España. Yes. Okay, so so we're going to. All right, let's try this one. This is, Give everybody a moment of silence. And then everybody's going to look at me and say. Yeah, this, this is going to be the new base in my taco salad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah 
I would have not thought personally. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have thought of this as being a, a flavor that I would associate with a pasta. Maybe a rice, but not a pasta. And I am glad to be wrong. I am so <laughs> glad to be wrong right now. <laughs> well, think about the corns, the beans, the ground meats, mm. the slices of avocado, the of, uh, and let me throw in also any South American fruits. Mm. Uh, as I as I got a guy that goes, all right, the international market is now your friend. Yes, because the fajita flavor is not over is not overwhelming. No, it's just it's just perfectly balanced. And this Again. was just good old plain dry fajita mix, which you can get I mean, at every grocery store on the planet. We're 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 not throwing it in there, but you know. We are looking for sponsors. We will name you if you. Yeah, we, <laughs> we we need. Yes, we do. Of. So when we come back, we're going to continue Rotini. Then we're going to wander over to a little angel hair pasta. And I am here today with Brandon and Claire as we're trying the wonders of. Uh, imagine, uh, imagine stretching the parameters of pasta. <laughs> I don't, I mean, all right. I, I, I'll agree to that based on people's preconceived notions. Yes. But when who are these sad people who don't know that you can do literally anything with pasta <laughs> and that's it. We, you can literally do anything with pasta and we've given it a good try here today. So far, so uh, far, um, we we've gone from uh, Caesar dressing with a mm-hmm. little bit of mayonnaise on rotini to uh, fajita seasoning. To mm-hmm. uh, what is this next thing we have Alrighty. on the agenda? Uh, we're going to wander off into uh, a Creole flavored angel hair pasta. Okay, does it have shrimp in it? No. It needs shrimp in it. I know. I know. This is just the base pasta to get your 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 gut reaction. I I know. I know. I know what we're doing here, but that doesn't mean I can't dream. Well, picture this with either crayfish tails. It is crayfish season. Of uh, shrimp, lobster, crab, blue crab, um, any just of or go the other direction and picture some nice andouille sausage mm. or. Uh, any form of Creole sausage. Um. Yeah, I'm okay. All right, <laughs> you look very dreamy right now, Brandon. <sighs> well, you told me to imagine. <laughs> you know, I know it, it doesn't play as well on the radio when I'm imagining, but <laughs> this is really good. But it looks good. So it, it tastes good. And, and this is a light. This is simple angel hair with a cream sauce. Okay, that's it. Now, uh, angel hair, you know. I don't know Skinny what it, spaghetti. I, I don't know what it is about angel hair, but any kind of you know cream base or cheese sauce, and and it becomes magic. Yes, you know, and and you don't think about it because you know people look at angel hair and they're like, this just doesn't seem like much. This is the stuff that comes out of a box. Yeah, this well, is you know. I typically get it in those little those nests. Mm-hmm. They're, they're a bag, and it's like it looks like you know what happens you know on your hairbrush after you know you brushed your kid's hair. <laughs> Or, well, Alan, I know it's been a long time since you brushed your hair. <laughs> but, yeah, it's the, this is just really good. So that's, that is that is yeah. the idea. You're just but, looking for a nice, quick, no. and honestly, angel hair pasta takes no. four minutes to cook. Yeah, it takes longer to cook ramen than it does angel hair pasta. Uh, just just to be honest, you know, yeah. it's so – Claire, how do we do? You did very nicely. <laughs> Especially Though when I still can't quite figure out how the Creole pasta is less spicy than the one we're going to have a little bit. Well, later. we're going to have here in a minute. Of Well, it's because I only put just enough seasoning in here to give it a tiny amount of color and just enough flavor to taste it. So you know to it's... spark the imagination. Yeah. Well, and it's because you can always add, mm-hmm. right? Because if you have if you have the average family, four or five people sitting around the table, you have three different levels of spice that are completely incompatible. Okay, you got the one that loves the heavy spice, the one that loves it in the middle, and the one that just is going to lose their mind if they think there's a flake of pepper in here. So, so it's 
Alan on one side, <laughs> me in the middle, and then our uh, our MCFR co-host Joe Thorderson <laughs> way down there because I mean in I, the butter and white bread department. I love Joe, but he gets to he gets to make fun of us on his other shows, so we're gonna hit him here. I think he thinks white bread is spicy. He does. He does. He 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 gets he gets all upset. So, so you know, so, you know, you're as you're sitting there with the family. There's just enough flavor here to let you know it's got a little something. Right now, what would you like to add? If you're a pepper sauce fan, great. If you like more cayenne pepper or red pepper or right. red pepper flakes, the option is there. It's just enough to get you started. So let's ease over well, to the linguinis. Before we move into okay. the linguini, because I've seen them done this too. I, you know, I brought up the angel hair nests, mm-hmm. but I've seen it done with linguini and with wider pastas as well. What is um, before we get into tasting more? What is the benefit, culinary benefit of cooking them in those tangles? Well, the idea here is it's it's a very aesthetically pleasing. Okay. Because, you know, we'll first right out of the hat. Because we all love the clutter. We we do. We we just like the, the big pile of noodles. Yeah. Um, it doesn't really hinder the cooking time or process. No. Because it makes it pretty quick. Yeah. Of you already know pretty much what you're going to get on the, on the backside of it. Mm-hmm. Of the other thing about having that kind of nest is that it does already begin providing little nooks and crannies for flavor. Okay. So again, we're dealing with just a just a straight stick, and 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 by by tangling it up within itself by why, by kind of you, making a a pot scrubber out of it. You can now basically, especially if you you're doing one of those dishes where the pasta goes onto the plate and then the flavor, you know, the sauce or the meats or whatever go into it. Right. So you already have kind of a a, a pleasing aesthetic when you're plating the food mm-hmm. without losing any of the flavor that you would get. In the long right, run, right, right. Okay. You say you're not we're not serving a mess. We're serving a uh, designed a work mess. of a work of art. Yes, yeah. We're we we already pre designed how we want this cluster to look. Right. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So you get a little plating expertise on that, and you already have nooks and crannies and places for the sauce and flavors right. and oils to settle. Okay. So okay. that's that, why that makes sense. Then I just I always wondered what you know what because I could get you know my angel hair just in the right. straight sticks or I could get it like that. And there, you know, there's a part of me, and maybe it's the artist, you know, mm-hmm. creative part of me that says, "Buy this. It's the same price. Get it." Yes, you know. but it has that little extra aesthetic oh, to yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay cool. To it. Alrighty, so we've got two linguinis here, and they are the exact same linguini. I promise you, they were cooked in the exact same batch, separated as they were uh, drained, I, and we're going to have a linguini Italian and a linguini Parmesan. I think we're going to start with the linguine Italian. All righty. It's got red flecks in it. We're going to eat the red flecks first. It's going to go with the little red flecks. Yeah. I know that flavor. You do? Yeah, that, that, yeah that's, that's Italian dressing. That is. This is probably the simplest, easiest pasta recipe on the planet. Okay, your this, your yeah. choice of Italian salad dressings. I, I'm I'm going to say lightly this. tossed yeah. over pasta. I, I'm I'm going to say this. this. Is our clothed linguini. Yeah, I, uh, I personally I would have probably you know if if I knew this was the plan I would have gone with a shorter pasta because this is the this is not one to stay on the fork. Yeah, I know you're having to chase it around a little bit, but <laughs> I am not Tom. You're, this is not Jerry. I do not need to chase my food. <laughs> you think it kind of like you think a penne on this? Or? Maybe, maybe, but, maybe a know. rotini if we really want to be clingy. Well, we, we're, we're all codependent, so we're going to be clingy. Well, all right. the reason I did this with the, uh, with the longer noodle, with the linguine, was to kind of throw in bits of chicken or okay. larger pieces of vegetable or mm. of really think medley on this. And I don't mean little tiny shreds of chicken. I mean chunks of chicken mm. of anything that you can think of that would go good with an Italian salad dressing. Your zucchinis, your bell peppers of half of the international market fruit department mm-hmm. of, you know, another one is peas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really. I mean, it's a, kind of one of those shockers and it's kind of like, Ooh, that's actually yeah. really good. 
of some people insist on putting them in a carbonara and it's like no they, they, they go in a medley like this of and i'll throw you in kind of a sidetrack one of basically steamed soybeans huh shelled steamed soybeans the edamame if you oh, wish yeah. of really kicks it with the italian salad dressing that, yeah that oh that would be so good so here you get now here's because you have the longer noodles you can always break them up if you want right of you can cut them break them up pre-cook them like that if you wish well normally or, i would be normally i'd be eating these with a metal fork instead of the plastic forks we're using that's true so i would have i would have just done it here in the plate but you can you know line the outside of the plate throw your vegetable medley in the middle of it mm-hmm. and now work it right see and and what's really good here is you did you've got the right balance of dressing to noodles because you know like you like you mentioned when we were talking about the rotini and mm-hmm. the caesar is the whole idea of people want to put in an entire bottle of dressing into something Mm-mm. that doesn't need it Mm-mm. you know we just want a light coating so right. you want to toss it a little bit so that's going to bring us to the other one and i threw in a little extra on the parmesan here because i wanted to do a spicy noodle okay This is a mm. surprise. Yes, yes. This is a little bit of a surprise because basically it is linguine and two ingredients, and that's it. Okay. Uh, all right. It's like a slightly aggressive cacio e pepe. So we have our Parmesan. Which is just cheese and pepper. Yeah. For yeah. those who don't. It, it's <laughs> exact. You are Italian. exactly on the money. It is extremely finely ground black pepper, fresh black pepper. Okay. Nice. Mm-hmm. Of... And a really good aged Parmesan. Yeah, yeah, you're going to have to go for the premium ingredients if you want to get this flavor because you're not going to get this flavor from just, you know, like, you know, a thing of pepper and uh, the, uh, you know, the, the shake cheese. No, well, no. It usually no. goes for any recipe where you have very, very few ingredients mm-hmm. because you're just mm-hmm. going to get hit with every little thing that's in there. Yeah. Now, because I made this one a little stronger... Just to prove to you, you could add a stronger flavor to a straight noodle. Right. Of you could really have fun with this with other stronger flavors. Okay. Because I'm going to throw in uh, roasted Brussels sprouts. All right. They love Parmesan of meats. And I'm going to go like Chortis Cusco choices of meats. Anything flamed at this point is going to tie into this beautifully. Uh, pork loins, uh, of yeah. oh. beef, fatty beef cuts. And I'm not talking the great, I'm not talking like the filet mignon stuff. I'm talking like the really cheapy cuts that are fatty oh. that are, are going to cook up and, are, and you want to make nice little thin pieces of this. You want to make big old, chunk, you know, tough chunks of something. Mm-hmm. But because we can convey a little extra flavor on the noodle, we don't have to do that much work on the other items. Right. Because think about uh, your cherry or your grape or your yellow tomatoes mm-hmm. just diced in half and tossed in here with this. They're, they're going to have that nice, heavier flavor, but they're going to cut the pepper. They're going to cut the cheese flavored down just a little bit. There's a... Uh Oh, I, this, this, I honestly, I'm, I'm having, I want to take this flavor and put it into a pasta salad to serve alongside a fruit plate. Yes. Think about your melons. Oh. Especially when you get over into honeydews or some of the other more fragrant melons when cut up. Cantaloupe. This is, this would be great with cantaloupe. You know, it's it's one of those of, you know, and, and people have to remember the Parmesan really does go well with that type of fruit flavor. It balances the acidic. It does. It helps. It helps you cut some of that just a little bit. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. I know we're not talking red sauces, but that, that's kind of what <laughs> I want. Yeah. Pasta the sequel. It will. And when we come back, we're going to wrap up on the pasta. I am sitting here with Claire and Brandon, and we are wrapping up talking about pasta today. And um, 
We're going to call this episode Pasta Possibilities. How about that? Pasta Possibilities. I like that. That's the best, most polite name we could possibly give it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we could be pompous about it, but, you know, there's all the P alliterations. The pompous pop- with it. Pasta Possibilities. So, uh, as we have discovered, the humble pasta, the, the penultimate filler of... There is nothing humble about pasta. Oh, my gosh. Done well, it, it, it will just steal the show. It did, you know. And it's inexpensive. It's very inexpensive. Okay. Now, I have a question for you. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, you go in, you know, you go into your, uh, you know, grocery store, wherever you, wherever you shop, right. whether it be one of your big box stores, whether it be one of your mom and pop places, whether it be one of the snooty, you know, like everything we have was touched by a golden cap mm. kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I, you know, you go down your pasta aisle. What is the difference between your basic pastas and a bronze cut pasta? Or a steel cut? Or a steel cut pasta. Or, or a or, harvest under right. the moonlight in Nepal by... Um, Honestly, I want to I want to talk to Kalila down in, in New Orleans <laughs> about voodoo pasta. I mean, there, there has to be some because... There is. Because at this point... There's every other kind of pasta. Uh, there, there is. There's, so there, there's a wide variety yeah. of topics for that. Okay, so um, tell me, Alan. Okay, what is it about the cut? I, I'm guessing it has something to do with the pasta maker itself. Well, all right. We're gonna throw in pasta is fun to make. Okay, pasta is ridiculously simple. It is basically flour, something to moisten it with. You run it through the pasta maker. You cut it into now. Now ex- explain to people when when you say pasta maker, a lot of people think you know it's like a bread maker or something like that. It's not this big fancy contraption. It's literally a. It flat looks note. like a toy. It, it, it it's it, just a roller. It, it yeah. It's it, just a roller. It just rolls. It basically takes your for purpose your dough and turns it into something extremely flat. Yes, that's yeah. it. And, and then, it and you'll can, get your workout too. Oh yeah, you know, <laughs> for, 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 for you for you kids who've never had a crank window in a car. Correct. You, you need one of these so you understand why some people have one really big, strong arm, and one not not so good. Well, one was for balancing the old old timey ice cream maker, and the other one was for cranking that handle. Okay. So, of uh, welcome to making pasta at home. Again, follow the simple recipe, and I do mean simple. We we are talking. X amount of flour, X amount of moistening agent, be it water, milk, oil. Mm. You know, there's there's a variety of things you can play with here. Of And you're basically just going to make a dough ball. Right. And you're going to flatten it. Okay. Now's where it gets interesting. Cool. Of there is even now, there's all different kinds of flour that can be used. So there's right. semolina. There's everything from semolina to rice. Okay. Uh, depending upon what kind of pasta you're trying to make. All right, the craziest pasta, I do not remember the actual Asian name for it, but it literally translated as fish leaping into the water. Okay. And what you have is a gentleman with what looks like a tray that you would use to you put concrete on a wall. Okay. With his dough, kind of semi-flattened out. And he has basically got a very long chopstick, and he is separating out a very long, thin piece of pasta and is flinging it into the boiling water. That just sounds fun. And if you watch somebody that is, that is really gonna totally good at this. Up, that's going to totally end up behind my stove. But yeah, that oh, oh, <laughs> If you watch somebody really good at this, it is shocking how much pasta they make, how fast. Okay. Okay. So let's go back to the human race because <laughs> we're normal. I'm, I'm not going to be able to do that. No. Of so you got your cute little pasta maker. You got your dough. You crank it out, and this is where what you cut it with kind of jumps in. Okay. Of if you have steel cut, anything that touches anything partakes something to it or from it. Okay. Sure. Uh, so we have like your rolled steel cut oats Mm -hmm. it's just the way the steel cuts it okay 
And so it, it's just it's just the effect. You could say bronze cut if you had a bronze knife. Right. If you had, you know, steel cut, you're going to have uh, iron cut, whatever, whatever it is you're cutting it so with. So in other words, people are saying, we made it this way, and so here's an extra dollar on top of the price. Possibly. Okay. Because, you know, cut by a large machine with plastic blades doesn't sound as good on the label. Dude, I could totally sell that, though. I know. <laughs> I could have an entire Amazon store for nothing but that. So, welcome to pasta. Pasta can be cut, rolled, extruded, shaped. Uh, Coming soon to Kitchens Day ZK, Ginsu cut. <laughs> Heck yeah. Because I got, I, I got a whole new set of Ginsu, Ginsu knives. I'm like... I, I'm thinking Mortal Kombat. Have Katana Kombat, cut. You know. Have Katana cut there, pasta. There we go. Right? Capture She's, the weeb market. I, she, goes, <laughs> she goes right after me. Right there. There you go. So, you, you know, call so, me out. I call you out. There you go. Nin, ninja cut. Ninja cut pasta. There we go. I can't wait for the pirate blades to get involved. Well, yeah. And I know making pasta sounds intimidating, <laughs> but just remember, if an Italian peasant could do it, so can you. Well, everybody can do this. This is not, not that hard. It's a fantastic way to spend an afternoon to cook really good food. So, guys, uh, follow us at thecookingtodayshow.com. 